Hello and welcome back everyone. So up till now we have completed the major connectors, the minor connectors and the rest and the rest seats. And today we will move on to our next topic in the RPD series that are the direct retainers. So when a removable partial denture is placed inside the oral cavity, there are many different forces that act on that prosthesis. The direction of these forces on the denture can either be towards the tissue, across the tissue or away from the tissue of the oral cavity, depending upon whether the acting forces are vertical or horizontal. And in general, the forces that act to move the denture towards the tissue or those forces that act to move the denture across the tissue are of greatest intensity because these two types of forces are most of the time resulting from the forces of occlusion. And resistance against these forces is very important for a healthy oral mucosa. And this resistance against these forces is provided by the other components of the partial denture which are your major connectors, your rests and the other components which are already discussed in my previous lectures. But the third type of the force acting on the denture that are the forces that act on the denture to move it away from the tissue or in other words the forces that can cause dislodgement of the denture are resisted by the direct retainers. These forces that act away from the tissue consist of forces of gravity for the maxillary denture, the relative stickiness or the adherence of food when chewing and opening and closing of mouth or the other forces that act across the fulcrum to unseat the prosthesis. If you want to know more on the concept of retention, I suggest you watch my video on the basis of retention for a more detailed overview on retention. So back to the original topic, direct retainers are basically those components of the partial denture that resist the movement of the prosthesis away from the abutment or the tissue and hence provide retention to the denture. So they basically engage in abutment to resist the displacement of the denture away from the tissues. This ability of the direct retainer to resist these forces is greatly influenced by the stability and support provided by the major connectors, the minor connectors and the rest. Although as mentioned in my previous lectures, the forces that act to move the denture away from the tissue are not as great as the forces that cause stress towards the tissue. But still the removable partial denture must have adequate retention in order to resist reasonable dislodging forces. And this accomplishes our primary retention of the prosthesis which is the resistance to dislodging forces which is provided by the direct retainers. While the secondary retention is provided by the intimate relationship of the minor connector contact with the guiding planes and the denture bases and the intimate relationship of the maxillary major connector with the underlying tissues which are already discussed in detail in my previous lectures. So moving on, let's look into the basic key details of the direct retainers. Now the class assembly is the component that performs the function of direct retention for the removal partial denture. And this class assembly consists of three key elements, which are the occlusal rests, the retentive arm and the reciprocal or the stabilizing arm. Now there are many different types of direct retainers or the class assemblies, but the basic principle among all the types remain the same. These few basic principles we need to understand and must know because they are not only essential for the direct retainer design but are also very important for your exams. So first let's talk about the very basic principle of the clasp design which is known as the principle of encirclement. So as we already know the clasp assembly is something that must encircle the abutment tooth in a manner that prevents the movement of the tooth separate from the clasp assembly or the retainer and only then will the clasp assembly provide adequate retention to the denture inside the mouth. Or in other words, the clasp should not allow movement of the dentures separate from the abutment and vice versa, which will otherwise result in decreased retention or harm to the abutment tooth and overall lead to the long term failure of the denture. And in order to accomplish this key function, the principle of encirclement suggests that all the clasp designs should engage the abutment tooth for more than 180 degrees along the tooth's axis, passing from above and below the bulkiest portion of the tooth. So if I view the tooth from the occlusal surface and if I draw a straight line going across the tooth then the clasp design should engage the abutment tooth crossing this line because we all know that a straight line represents a complete 180 degrees. 
and the principle of encirclement suggests that the clasp should engage the abutment tooth for more than 180 degrees. Now this type of engagement can either be in a form of a continuous engagement like in the circumferential clasp design or it can be in the form of a discontinuous engagement as like in the bar clasp design. I will talk more on the types of class design in my future videos but this principle is the key principle for any type of class design and hence is very important for a prosthodontist or a dental student to understand. So moving on the next principle suggests that the occlusal rest of the class assembly must be designed to prevent movement of the class arm towards the cervical of the tooth. This basic principle will only be possible if the rest seat is prepared properly and the rest is made rigid to resist the vertical movement of the class assembly. More detail about the rest design and the basic principles are discussed in my previous lecture on the rest and rest seats. So moving on, each retentive arm of the class assembly should be opposed by a reciprocal arm and that reciprocal arm must be capable of resisting forces that are exerted by the retentive arm during placement and removal of the denture. Because the retentive arm provides retention to the denture but it can also place some harmful forces on the abutment in doing so which may cause unwanted forces being placed onto the abutment and therefore the reciprocal arm is important to counteract these harmful forces that may be placed by the retentive arm on the abutment. This same concept is applied onto the next principle. The class retainers on the abutment teeth that are adjacent to the distal extension bases should be designed so that they don't direct the transmission of tipping or the rotational forces on the abutment teeth. Otherwise this will result in harmful forces being applied onto the abutment and this will lead to the eventual failure of the denture. So the direct retainer on the last abutment teeth of the distal extension basis should be designed as to not to apply any kind of harmful tipping or rotational forces onto those last abutment which will otherwise lead to the movement of those abutment. And in distal extension basis, failure of the last abutment is very demeaning for the entire denture. In fact, the clasp should be designed in such a way that they act as a stress breaker for those last abutment, decreasing the already placed stress on those teeth. Because the last teeth in the distal extension bases are already under a lot of stress that is being placed by the denture and an additional stress will only result in eventual failure of the denture. Therefore to conclude this point, the clasp should not place any more stress on those abutment and if possible the clasp should act as a stress breaker for those last abutment teeth in the distal extension bases. Now onto the next, the retentive clasp arm should be opposed bilaterally meaning that they must have a cross arch opposing component. So if there is a buccal retentum component on the one side then it should be opposed by a buccal retentum component on the other side of the arch. This will provide the cross arch stability. And similarly the reciprocal component must also be rigidly connected bilaterally meaning they must also have a cross arch component to provide reciprocation to the retentive elements. So in short both the retentive and the reciprocal component should have a cross arch opposing component in order to stabilize the overall clasp and the denture. Now to provide an effective retention the path of escape of the retentive arm must not be parallel to the path of removal of the denture. Meaning that the retentive arm must have a path of removal that is not parallel or not in line with the path of removal of the denture. So both of them that is the denture and the retentive arm must have a non-paralleling path of removal. For example if the denture is being removed from the mouth at approximately 180 degrees from the tooth then the retentive arm must have a path of removal that is either greater than 180 degrees or less than 180 degrees. This is necessary in order to achieve clasp engagement that gives retention to deformation and hence provides retention. But the amount of retentive force provided by the clasp onto the abutment should always be the minimum necessary enough to resist reasonable dislodging forces. It should not be too much to overpower the reciprocal component and cause harmful effect onto the abutment and not too less to provide inadequate retention. But it should only be at the borderline necessary enough to provide just enough retention to the denture. So finally let's talk briefly about the location of the two arms. 
So as we know that both arms of the clasp should be located on the crown of the abutment. The reciprocal component should be located at the junction of the gingival and the middle third of the crown. While the terminal end of the retentive arm is placed in the gingival third of the crown. So the retentive arm is actually placed a little bit lower on the crown than the reciprocal component. These locations of the two arms will allow for a better resistance to horizontal and torquing forces. So these all were the key basic principles for the direct retainer design. So in my future lectures, I will be discussing more on the different types and different systems of the direct retainers and the components of each of these direct retainers. So I will meet you people next time. Till then, take care of yourselves and your loved ones. Stay safe and goodbye.